I feel very honored to be the first artist in residence here in St. Louis. And, um, you know, to be able to bring a little bit of the street here to the stage. Because um, I just love public art. And I believe in public art. And um, I'm here to open your eyes to public art. I look to artists like Keith Haring and people like Bob Castley, who put these turtles at Turtle Park or built the City Museum and really kind of started things in these areas. Before the City Museum came up, it looked like Escape from New York. They literally filmed it down there, no joke. Um, but you see how art sparks this. And this, is, this has been very inspiring to me as an artist to see these artists and understand that. So my art journey kind of started out doing like band um, posters and flyers and then rave flyers. And then I was hired by this company in Chicago, uh, one of the very first guerrilla marketing companies in America, to do graphic design for them. And it was awesome. We had James Brown at our Christmas party. We, we could drink at the end of the night. We could smoke at our offices. It was like Mad Men. And it was super cool, especially being a young artist, that I had this job. But our biggest client was a tobacco company. And we were cre creating these things that, in a way, were kind of promoting cancer. And it was hard to do. So around this same time, I had my first son. And this totally affected me and really made me reevaluate why I was creating art. So I decided to move to St. Louis with my wife and newborn son, and I started developing a new form of art. And to me, it was stencils, which date back to 3000 BC, where people would take their hand, blow berry juice on a wall, and you would get the, the, the impression of a hand. So I had seen work of artists by the guy by the name of Banksy, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with his work, and he works in stencils. So I kind of reproduced the same thing on my own level, because there really wasn't a book for stenciling. So I started taking my image, I draw them out, lay them down on cardboard, cut them out, and then reveal, and you had this magical image. So around that time, this was pre-MySpace, pre-Facebook, there was a website called stencilrevolution.com based out of Melbourne, Australia. I discovered the site about a month after I started stenciling. And for the first time from St. Louis, I could post an image online and people could comment on that and give you positive reinforcement or like, what you know, you could work on this. And this was amazing to me. So I kind of got better at it. I did more and more. And uh, the Central West End had invited me to paint an electrical box. And this electrical box was down on King's Highway in front of Children's Hospital. And since my son was the reason that I started this new art, I decided to pay tribute to him. So as you see, you can kind of see my process where I take mul multiple layers of stencils and spray them out. And you can kind of see the image reveal, because most of the time goes into cutting out these stencils. So I set up a camera and did this time lapse. And about the same time, YouTube was, had, had just been born. That's my boy. So I posted this video online. And by the end of the week, I had 5,000 views. And I was amazed from St. Louis, people from all over the globe were seeing this portrait of my son. And that was awesome. I was so stoked to have that happen. So I continued to do more and more of this art and posting it on Stencil Revolution, mostly doing portraits of people that I cared about, my dog, Mr. T, Chris Farley. But one common theme were the eyes. And I was known as Sten Soul, because I believe that eyes are the window to your soul. So I continued to make more of these videos, but instead of just doing a time lapse, I would become the character in the video. And Lola Van Allen remembers this because this was from the Albino Alley Cat Club. Even uh, the City Museum asked me to do a portrait of my hero, Bob Castley. And a, a, a hotel in San Francisco invited 20 street artists like Shepard Ferry, David Cho, and myself to do rooms. And I did the luchador room because at the time my kids loved Nacho Libre. So I kept kind of continuing this journey. People were seeing my work. 
and I was invited to Art Basel in Miami. And if you guys aren't familiar with that, it's the Super Bowl of art events. And that takes place in South Beach. So there's a neighborhood called Wynwood, which at the time was basically a thriller video. There were zombies everywhere. <laughs> and so I decided to pay tribute to this artist right here. And his name is Keith Herring. And he was the first art artist that I saw when I was at a summer art program at Pratt Institute in New York when I was 17. And Keith Herring is known, his icon is this baby. And he be I believe he is the first street artist, because this was in a time in the 80s where people were tagging up trains. Well, this man went down into the subways and did these almost aboriginal drawings of people on these empty black panels. So I went down to Miami, I cut off all my hair, and I wanted to become my hero. So this was actually the year of his 50th birthday. He had died of AIDS back in 1990. So the bodies that I painted represented people who had died of AIDS and also paid tribute to this man who inspired me to be the artist that I am right now. Thank you. So Mountain Dew had actually seen these videos and I was shocked that they contacted me. They said, Pete, we love your videos. We'd love for you to do a limited edition Mountain Dew bottle. Well, this kind of took me back to my commercial art days where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm back here again. But at this time, it was on my terms. And back in the 60s, their icon was a hillbilly. You know, you know it was kind of like, you know, Mountain Dew, right? So I decided to kind of do my own take on this. Um, and it was an amazing program. They put it in 7-Elevens and Quick Trips all around the United States. And it was a great program. They had six different artists, like a six pack of art. And I even did a video that, uh, where I dressed up like the hillbilly, went down to the Paint Lewis wall uh, with, uh, with some friends and we painted uh, this, basically this art that went on the bottle. So it was a pretty cool project. So, thank you. So I still had my day gig. At this time, I was working at Channel 5 doing mostly web design for them, but I still wanted to get serious with my art. So I got a studio down by the riverfront, and I needed a vehicle to haul around all this stuff that artists need. So I bought a 1963 Econoline truck. And I wasn't sure what to put on this truck. I wanted to make it an art car. I wasn't going to put a portrait of my son or Keith Haring. But I looked back to my art, which all had these eyes in it. And I said, wow, why don't I cover this truck with eyes? I mean, it's an Econoline, so why don't I make it an, an eye Econoline? And little did I know that this would birth the next series of my art, which is E-Y-E-Z. So I took this down to a simple image, and I'm gonna step off of this for a second so I can kind of explain the eye here. So this eye, as you see, is mostly red, and the reason I chose red is because I believe red symbolizes life. We all have red blood, no matter where you are, who you are, you all have red blood flowing through your brains. Or, I'm sorry, not brains, so your veins. <laughs> And, uh, but if also if you look closely with this eye, and a lot of people don't really realize, but there's a smiley face in there. So if I cover up this right here, you'll see a dot, a dot, and then a smile. So he's kind of like winking. So South Grand asked, asked me to come paint something on these parking pots. So I featured one of these eyes, and it was the first time that I had one of these eyes on the street. And then at the same time, I started getting stickers made and handing them out to friends and family. And myself, I would just wake up inanimate objects just by adding two eyes, you know, to a gas meter or a trash can. And it was amazing. People were seeing these little kids were coming up going like, Mr. Pete, I found 35 eyes. And I'm just like, yeah, man, keep it on. And it was very exciting just waking up the world with eyes down in Venice Beach, in Brooklyn, New York, and, ba and, and also in St. Louis because I love St. Louis. Yeah! I brought these eyes then to bodies. I gave them a life to walk. These eyes now were kind, kind of now gaining their own body. They could walk along. A guy even invited me to paint up some locomotives in his graveyard. And it was a truly surreal experience. And then I carried these eyes over to patterns where I could stencil out walls like 300 feet on Del Mar Avenue that it was just a one, uh, people were starting to see more and more and more of these eyes. I even did a cake. And uh, I did a, a big installation down at Bonnaroo at National Airport. 
And even some celebs started seeing some of these eyes, which was pretty cool. Crondelet was doing a large mural project down uh, in South St. Louis, and they wanted me to feature these eyes. So this time I looked to my next son, James, and I wanted to pay tribute to him. So this is the largest mural I had ever created to the date, and I was really excited to work on this project and cut some of the world's largest stencils ever made. But there was another thing I wanted to do with this. You know those old Cracker Jack toys that you kind of go back and forth and they'd animate? Well, if you notice, this building has corrugation. And so what I wanted to pull off too, other than being the largest mural that I've created, to also make it blink, to make it animate as you drove by. So as now, you can see the completed mural up here, but if you look closely, the eyes are closed, they open up, and then they close again. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh, my boy. So I did not stop with, the, uh, with doing portraits because that's really where my roots were. So I continued to create more and more portraits of people who have opened other people's eyes and even kind of incorporated the, uh, incorporate these eyes into those murals. Here's Maya Angelou, I Will Rise. Uh, Nelson Mandela, of course Steve Jobs, and even my grade school teacher at the college school, Jan Phillips. Thank you. We all know what happened back in our August with Mike Brown. Um, and I think it touched everyone's lives, no matter where you are on that. Um, so I was actually commissioned to do a mural in North St. Louis, about a block away from Crown Candy. And originally the mural was supposed to be homes and kind of showing like neighborhoods uplifting and you know, featuring the eyes again. But I asked them, I was like, you know, I kind of want to make a discussion about really what's going on. And so I asked if we could add some hands and some peace signs that showed really what we needed to do was to rise up as one. So I continued my mission over the next few months with a message that I spray for peace. And I kept kind of pushing this throughout the city and even on a large scale mural in Indianapolis. And this was a, almost a half mile mural and each was a different rail car. And the only thing they wanted me to do was to spread positive messages. So I did rail car logos, but instead of Frisco, it would say forgive or be nice. And this is the full mural right here in Indy. Thank you. So back in November, the, ver the verdict for Michael Brown came out and a lot of people weren't happy with the outcome. And buildings were damaged in Ferguson and in South Grand, and broken windows happened and the things got boarded up. So the morning after this event, I was invited to come up and I got a call from Martin Casas to come up and maybe help beautify some of these boards. And I didn't know what to expect, so I cut a quick stencil and showed up. And there were 80 people out here overnight to do this mural. And I've tried to get mural projects to, uh, together and it takes weeks and weeks and weeks. This was overnight. So my assistant Cam Williams and I showed up on Grand and this was the message that I wanted to convey to St. Louis that for us to all open our eyes and to move into the future, we needed to heal STL. So I invite you all, no matter what you do, to open people's eyes. Much love and peace.